Jason's over there. He's nervous. This is the Ringer Live Lottery Show. We don't do this very often. That's Ryan Rossillo. Um, we think this could be one of the most meaningful nights in recent NBA history, or it could be just a blip. I don't know. What do you think? We almost missed the show. I was so excited about this, and you and I sat in your office for way too long, and I was like, yeah, oh, we, we did. Are, we did. We're like, Am oh I supposed God. to watch the camera? This is informal, right? Yeah, no. Yeah, look at the camera. Look at me. All right. You've done TV a couple times. Oh, yeah. Presented by State Farm. Right. It's an informal live lottery show presented by State Farm. So, want to start this out with the live, live lottery karma power rankings, which I have not shown you. No, these are um, fresh. I like to figure out from a karma standpoint who deserves to win the lottery most. I'm a big karma guy. I like to tip my servers at least twenty percent, unless they really do something terrible. Then I then it might be like seventeen percent. But for the most part, 20% and up for my servers. Have you noticed some of the automated tipping, though? When you see like 30% on a smoothie, you're like, come on, guys. Like, who's, <laughs> that is, that is, who's hitting 30? It's a great point. Yeah. Uh, so lottery karma power rankings. Here are the questions that you have to ask yourself if your team is eligible for Zion Williamson tonight. Number one, is your team overdue to win a lottery? I think that's fair. Like if I'm a Cavs fan, I'm not feeling overdue. Like, man, this is our time. It's No. Number two. Your anti-Cavs lottery thing, though, is well established. I think I saw you lose it one time during the actual lottery I show. actually did. I kind of, yeah. like, blacked out. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's on YouTube. Didn't you demand, um, like, a rule change in the middle I of, like, did. an ESPN show? Yeah. The Cleveland fans are sober, and then there's some dickhead on the on TV just going nuts about how we need to change the rules. I don't apologize, though. Uh, second, has the team who is in the lottery, has their big-picture game plan made any sense whatsoever or are they just in here because of dumb luck number three this is an important one did they handle last season with dignity <laughs> so like wait a minute How, Hawks, 23 there... and 30 in their last 53 g games last year dignified so you're going anti you're rewarding teams for being competitive and having winning records saying, not tanking was there dignity number four did they ever make you say why can people divorce their spouses, but they can't divorce their teams? If your team made you say that, you're probably overdue to win the ladder. So that's a, a good couple karma. Knicks fans over there who have probably said that to themselves. I can't wait to see where the Knicks are ranked here. Last but not least, um, do you honestly believe the karma gods feel bad for you? And that's it. All right, so you look at like some of the teams that are available here. Like the Sixers could win the lottery. I would say they have zero karma right They've i feel like no one's even the lottery how has no one done a bad segment on that yet like if you have zion how does that fit with ben simmons like nobody even oh, bothered <laughs> maybe they don't draft zion yeah maybe they take john Morant. like we needed a more traditional point play ben at, ben at the two no one even did that bad segment i feel like I'm, we missed an opportunity i'm ready right now okay um before we get to the uh lottery karma rankings are you okay with the way we do the lottery right now well, we changed it again, and it seems like we overcorrected it a little bit. Yeah, but what happens then is that this is this is exactly what happens. Okay, so whatever system you've had, and they've gone back and forth with this so much, it goes all the way back to the Keem stuff. Yeah. Whenever it was just well, whoever has the worst record, we'll just go ahead and do that. We're like, well, wait a minute, that's ridiculous. We have to do some odds here. The tanking's out of control. I mean, this tanking thing is nothing new. It goes way back to the you know what we saw some of the stuff happening in the eighties. The eighties was, was when the eighties. Yeah. Like, the right, rockets. The rockets ruined it for everybody. So then. When it became no, that. Sean Yu shaking his head. Hey. Shots look, fired. He's still you. licking his wounds from Friday night. I remember that <laughs> 84 just a drive Sports Illustrated. Of Sean Yu. Okay, then we had the complaints that the worst team, once we had the lottery, we were like, wait a minute, the worst team in the league barely has that good of a chance of winning right. their World War picks. So we're like, all right, so let's weight it heavily that way. And now, because tanking took off again, like none of this, there's no perfect system is the whole point. So now they've corrected again in a way where if a bunch of teams that have bad, if the Knicks end up with the fifth pick, then everyone's going to freak out considering how bad that team was this year. So I don't. I think the point of this is whatever percentage you want to put on it, no one's ever going to be happy. Who's in more danger if the Knicks get the fifth pick? Who'd you say? Like, is Adam Silver's job now in, in jeopardy at this point? Is there a revolt? Does Stern FaceTime him? <laughs> Stern, <laughs> like, Stern, Stern, Stern's like, dude, I thought I gave you the playbook. I told you, freeze the envelope. You put like carbon, whatever. Do you, on it. Do you? What are you willing to believe, conspiracy, Bill? 
I think some chicanery happened in the 80s. Do you, you think the Ewing thing? <laughs> <laughs> I think there's been some moments in NBA history that maybe they're happy that we don't go backwards. Like when David Stern found out about YouTube and he's like, wait, the lottery? Is, is the lottery going to be on YouTube from, from 85? He freaked out. There's no question. You can't find it? Oh, I've, I've there, found it. I've yeah. studied it. And that envelope had a turn on one of the corners. It absolutely 100% did. You can watch it on YouTube. Would you leave it to the turn? Like, you know how older people can be with envelopes in general? I don't even mail anything now. But I'm just saying, like, would you trust something that important if you were going to fix it to just search for the one with the dinged corner? So that's the, the counter to this is David Stern was a middle-aged man at this point who would have had to, while looking at the camera, just magically Think about grab that. the thing, felt the cold envelope that had the corner, and just pulled it out. My counter is, what if he practiced for like three straight weeks? This is all he did. And he had a mustache He's just that eight year hours too, right? a day. Yeah, eight hours a day. He's just like, all right, no, nope, do it again, David. No, nope, no, nope, reach down. No, nope, do it one more time. And then finally, like week three, he got it. He's like, I got this. Let's go. What'd you work on this offseason? <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. Whenever anybody brings up the whole thing being fixed, I always think of Duncan on the Spurs because that's where you want one of the greatest generational talents. Shaq and the Magic. Yep, Shaq and the Magic. But that one's a little bit easier to explain, or just the Cavs' run of recent history. So well, I'm just I'm not willing to believe it. There were a couple shaky ones this decade. You think the Pelicans winning Anthony Davis was a shaky well, one? Well, two in a row. We had LeBron leaves the Cleveland Cavaliers. And then the next year they win the lottery with the Clippers pick, which was like the eighth pick. That raised my eyebrow. And then the next year, Anthony Davis, right when the Pelicans were getting sold, they couldn't find a buyer. The Benson family is like, all right, fine, we'll buy them. And then it's like, oh, the Pelicans have won Anthony Davis. That was suspicious. But now, when we're also look, talking I, about fraud, like this is a crime yeah. if you're fixing the lottery now. So, so that's the other thing, too. I don't like, think it's happening. Think about how all different like stories or like these revelations where all these things go wrong and how we all find out because there's, there's such great stories. Somebody wants to share them with somebody else. So the NBA is that good at this that no one's ever shared any of these stories. And to remind you of Chicago with Rose or the pick with the Clippers pick there, like there's, there's a reason why we actually still get excited and there's 14 fan bases tuning in that it says 1% or 2% next to your team, and it doesn't say zero. So somebody has to, with no odds, win. I know there are Sixers fans out there who still can't believe the shot hit four parts of the rim before it went in and they got knocked out, and Embiid played 45 minutes and, what, 32 seconds? Backup center, Zion. So we had to. Monroe was minus nine. It's like, no, you didn't have to. You don't have to run Embiid in the ground. But I know there are some Sixers fans. No, no. <laughs> I know there are some Sixers fans who are like, yeah, 1%. We're in there. Where is it? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry hey, Chris. That, Chris. Sorry, Chris. Um, <laughs> it's a good crowd. Good crowd. Lively. Yeah. Lively in here. Where are you guys uh, from? Anyone from Ohio? <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, three ways I would change the ladder rules. So you can agree or disagree. Are we not doing one. the karma rankings? We are doing it right now before right. we do it. Three ways to change something that's been changed every three years. Go. Number one, no team can win the lottery twice in a five-year span. Yes or no? Can't win it twice. Mm. You just get, but you drop down to two. So that would rule out this year Minnesota, Phoenix, and Philly. Table, I would table that one. Table that one? All yeah. right. You're, I'm 0 for 1. No team can win the lottery if it's made the lottery five straight times. <laughs> yeah, win. Phoenix yeah, and the win. Lakers. Yeah, win is fine. Oh, so you're, you're in on that one. That one's not, yeah, that's fine. Because you know I'm an NBA Republican. What does that mean? I don't, I don't like to reward the, the, the lower class <laughs> NBA teams. I'd rather destroy them. I'm an NBA Republican. <laughs> three, no team can land a top three pick for three straight years. This is, didn't, you, didn't you just basically say the same thing three different ways? No, nobody qualified this year. <laughs> uh... I you are like, just ruling out. I'm sorry, out, I don't right. make confidence. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What about immigration? <laughs> I love immigration. <laughs> uh, all right, lottery karma rankings. Okay. <laughs> that was a good ad lib. <laughs> Separating this into categories, do we have cool graphics for this, Sean? You have you recovered from the drive-by shooting? 
You're good? Oh, All the right. Rockets thing? Were you even yeah. alive for that Ralph Sampson, Hakeem stuff? No, he's just very yeah. sensitive now. Don't even worry about it. Durant got hurt. Sleepy and he like Floyd. had a victory party on Thursday. Oh, night really? Yeah, he's Ooh. like, we're going to the finals. We've got this. James Harden, Chris Paul, you Mike D'Antoni, what Durant could go wrong? Hurt. Yeah. All right, so no karma whatsoever. I have two teams on this list. The uh, the Sixers, Celtics, neither of them deserve to win the list. I'm from Boston, and I would never think we deserve to win this. So the wrinkle there this is— This is the if, proudest I've ever been of you. Thank you. Philly gets the first pick. Boston gets all the other slots with that Sacramento pick. Uh, the other team that has no karma whatsoever is the Lakers, who have picked second, 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 and seventh since 2014. So this no is playoffs about, since 2011. Okay, but it's not no karma. This is this is in the you don't have any good karma. This isn't yeah, you that. deserve you deserve no lottery good spirits. Because I can't imagine that there's anyone outside of L.A. that if L.A. were to walk around away with Zion, be like, well, you know what? That's good. I'm glad they had good luck because they've been basically the laughing stock nationally of the NBA the last few weeks. Yeah, I have a little question for this. Okay, are they the league's biggest train wreck right now? Have the Knicks and Kings passed the torch to the Los Angeles Lakers? After this latest coaching search where we had Frank Vogel, who was like their fourth choice. I actually like Frank Vogel, but I mean, he was like their fourth choice. And then they're like, but you have to also bring in Jason Kidd, who is a Game of Thrones character. Um, Cersei? No, and the, and no, let me get this is like it. the third craziest thing they've done this year? Or are you doing some Game of Thrones sports <laughs> no, crossover I was just content? Try, I, was try, I didn't know who you were, we're coming doing up with. this? Right. Um, no, he's more like a Varys. Bald. I thought everybody was calling him Littlefinger. Littlefinger? Hey, that's an insult to Littlefinger. Too he was so much out. better at this. Littlefinger had a great Should record. I grab a sword? <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Um, so no karma for the Lakers is, yeah. my, in my, yeah, that's, is my opinion. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. So next, no good karma. Next category, new graphic. A cereal bowl of karma points. There's some karma points, but that's it. I have the Suns here as the third lowest karma team. Nine straight lottery appearances. They have picked 1st, 4th, 4th, 5th, 13th, and 14th since 2013. Um, and they're owned by the Mad King, Robert Sarver, the worst owner uh, in the league right now. Now, the counter is never made the finals. I'm, I'm sorry, never won the finals. Only made the finals twice. And I feel bad for their fans. And the fans don't deserve this. They don't deserve Robert Sarver for 13 years. So I feel for them. So that's why I gave them some points. When you were bringing up L.A. as the laughing stock or train wreck, I think Phoenix is the only one that could even hang. That rivals them? And what a win for the Kings, not to even be mentioned. I don't think you can right now. 39 wins? They're not in the conversation? I'm really proud of them. It was a fun team this year. When you're kind have of a Marlboro pass, Red on, Lee, on me, Vlade. What's that? I was telling Vlade to have a Marlboro Red on me in celebration. He's done the conversation. I thought you said meme in there. Yeah, I was I, like, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't know what we were doing. Uh, all right, I'm good. But Phoenix is long term. Like, Sarver, the day he got the keys, yeah. was just ramming it into the garage. He's like, door. I got yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. We're so. going to trade the seventh, seventh pick for cash. Do you have it written down how many picks they've had? I mean, just since 2013, they've had four top five picks. That tells me you're not good at this. Or the That's drafts. Right. Yeah, the drafts weren't great. All right, so next I have the Hornets. The Hornets have had uh, – they only have a 1% chance. Since 2008, they have picked between 8 and 12 nine times. Like, they have basically said to their fans, we are locking down 36 wins for you guys. We got this. We're going to be the Orlando Magic. Just pick a little later. Yeah. Um, I just want to point out they have $85 million on the books next year for Nick Batum, Bismack Biombo, Marvin Williams – one of the Zeller brothers and Michael Kidd Gilchrist, eighty-five million. The cap's like one hundred and four, <laughs> but it's going to go up. So maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe they have some room to get uh, Deion Waiters. Uh, That's incredible. Yeah, it's bad. The Cavaliers are my next uh, karma team as we start rising up the karma rankings. They have won the lottery four times since two thousand three. They have won five of the thirty-five lotteries, unless my math is wrong, since two thousand eleven. They've picked first, 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 fourth, fourth, and eighth just this decade. So I'm not going to – I I don't feel it's bad. It's well the established. It's They've well won established, the title right. too, by the way. Yeah, we don't need to – By the way, can you imagine what Gilbert and the Cavs run would be like? Like we're sitting here looking at this Lakers thing because it doesn't seem to end. Yeah. But at least there's some connection to success because we're talking about a family that's owned this team for such a long time. All right. Sarver, the minute he walked in. But can you imagine if Gilbert never had the LeBron years? How bad it would be? Yeah. It would be awful. Or I'm going the other way. Maybe LeBron was holding Gilbert back. 
That'd be a great talk show segment. Was the second best forever <laughs> holding Dan Gilbert back coming up next? Second best of the league now? Yeah. Um, I have the T-Wolves next. They won the lottery in 2015. They had three number one overall picks in their roster this year. This is amazing. Since 06, they've picked first, second, third, fourth, fifth, fifth, sixth, sixth, seventh, seventh, ninth, and 13th. God, that's so many picks. It's so bad. Do you know that they have, they've won two playoff series ever, and they were both in the same year, 2004? In the other 29 years they've existed, they did not win a playoff series. And that was when Garnett was out every year for consecutive years, Just like, needed help. And then he had that weird Trenton Hassel team. Yeah. Cell was there. That was the team that went to the Western Conference Finals, Spreewell. right? Spreewell. Yeah, Spree. Ola Troy Candy. Hudson. Yeah, Troy Hudson. So Everybody had the same look on that team. Does anybody remember that? Thirty. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> 30 seasons, 21 lottery appearances. 21. Uh, next one, last one in this category, the Heat. This is pretty good. No top nine picks since 2008. They've been, like, exceedingly competent. Uh, they've only had their lottery card pulled once as a top three pick, Beasley, in 2008. Um, my thing with them, I wrote this two years ago, too pretty to be in the lottery, like too sexy of a destination, won some titles. They have ca salary cap, no state tax, Pat Riley. It's like they don't belong here. This is The lottery is for the downtrodden. I don't like having the heat in there. But – I really think that this team would have been in a weird kind of limbo. Maybe Dwayne Wade leaves if LeBron and those guys don't come. So I feel like you should put them. It's not bad karma for them, but I don't think they have as much good karma just considering the history. Like that was the, one of the all-time great hookups where three players basically said, yep. we'll go where you're already playing, and it has nothing to do with anything else. So yep. that to me is better than winning the lottery three years in a row. So I don't think they, they don't have anything coming their way. New graphic, a salad bowl of karma points. Now we're talking. We're now. How many categories we got here? How many we, bowls are we looking this at? Is, this is the second to last bowl. Okay. I have the bulls here. Twelve point five percent chance they have the fourth spot in the lottery. They've only had one top ten pick since the Rose draft. Wendell Carter, last year, star of a ringer video, and that was about his highlight of his rookie season, I think. Um, sorry, when that was true. Um, here's the thing, cheap franchise. I keep coming back to the karma thing with them where third biggest franchise, third biggest market we have for the NBA, and they kind of operate it like it's Memphis. They're always like, hey, we made this trade. We're under the tax. It's like, what are you guys talking about? You have a season ticket waiting list for 50 years. You have Michael Jordan. Why are you, why are you cutting uh, corners? So it would kind of be annoying if Jerry Reinsdorf ended up yet again hitting the lottery literally with Zion. I got to tell you, the Jim Boylan news threw me off a bit. <laughs> you know how whenever you think you're just being lied to all season long by an organization <laughs> and you're totally fine with it? We're like, no, no, absolutely, this is our guy. And then they don't resign him. Yeah. The Boylan part, we're like, no, we love him. We love him, the development, the whole thing. I thought he was going to have a heart attack and a timeout <laughs> in a game and be like, aren't you guys tanking? Like, why are you talking about the right. leadership of this team? Like, it's, I don't even know why I'm watching right now. And they brought him back. So the front office for them, I, no one ever wants to back me on this because it's gone so bad. But they had an incredible stretch of drafting yeah. for a while where I'm like, these guys are really oh, good yeah. at it. They're very steady. And then to see it go the other way so quickly. But, you know, the marketing deal worked out. That's I still trade. like Carter. Uh, this I like is, Carter, too. This is a bad – like, if you started doing – and I know we'll do some of the Zion fit stuff thing a little bit yeah. later. Like, Chicago's actually one that scares me for Zion. Scares you in a bad way? Yeah, because of Zach Levine and Chris Dunn. Because they're going to take minutes from him? Levine's like, I don't care. He's like, I've been in, I'm older. <laughs> you think they put him on the leadership committee? Yeah. No. Although, yeah, that's true. I don't know. He, he probably can't be in the committee uh, he a year in. He has to apply. Yeah. Next team up from a karma standpoint, the Mavs. Um, they picked fifth and ninth the last two years. They have Luka Doncic. They have Porzingis. The wrinkle with this pick is unless it's top five, it goes to the Hawks. So they actually need to be in the top five. Uh, from a karma standpoint, I had to downgrade them for that crazy sexual harassment saga they had that I never really felt like, you know, not to be a comedy killer here, but I never felt really satisfied about how we resolved all of that and the apologies and all that. I just thought it was unseemly and I docked them from a karma standpoint. So there you go. I have uh, nothing to add. Yeah, I figured you wouldn't. <laughs> it's a super awkward. Next up, Grizzlies. Um, Grizzlies only a 3% chance. 10 Top six picks from 1995 to 2009. 
If you're wow. doing the ownership thing here, yeah. like we know what we've dealt with in Sacramento. We know the current L.A. thing. We've already talked about Sarver, Gilbert, the whole deal. Memphis gets away with Sneaky having maybe the the, the, un, the most unsteady owner of all these guys. Yes. We're so, not even sure he has money. I think he bought the team and his value was high, but then it – it crashed and then let him buy the team anyway. I'm not even sure he... He's the guy to go to the Hamptons with. You're like, this is sick. <laughs> and you're like, well, it's not really, you know. It's just that sure he's you renting take, it. Take your garbage with you. <laughs> what? Yeah, I think he's... We have billionaires in the NBA. I think he's a millionaire. Would but he wanted to play Tony it. Allen one-on-one, which I kind of love that spirit. I'm like, I this guy's a fighter. I you would do that if you were an owner. Oh, definitely. You would Especially him because Tony, his shot fell off later as he got older. You'd be like, oh, man, Rasilla's here. He wants to run full. Yeah. Why do you want to play full court one on one? All right. Who's going to guard him? So I, I, it's fine. The wrinkle with this pick is Boston gets the pick if it's ninth or higher. And if you're a Celtics fan, you do not want the pick this year because you'd rather roll it over because Memphis is a top five bad roster situation right now, considering they're in the West. Yeah. It's unprotected in a couple of years. Yeah. So that could so be the kind of, that that's a, that's a Tobias Harris acquiring type game changing pick. Is that insulting? I'm trying to figure that out. You'll figure it out. Insulting, Chris? Uh, Chris? No, is, no. What I Chris meant is by in a coma no, from you, game when seven. you have one of those, <laughs> like Chris is like, we had to peel him out of the car to get him to work yesterday. We should just run Fultz video. <laughs> just Fultz over, just, over. Just Fultz video, like this moment in time in the lottery <laughs> when, when the Sixers, like, man, if there's any way they could move up from three. Uh, All listen, right, this is just mean. Now we got to stop. I have a piece in my archives about guessing in from 2017 about what Fultz's upside is, and it's like. I have him a couple hairs above Derrick Rose, where Derrick Rose was in 08, like as a sure thing. I hate We're comps. We're all wrong. I hate comps so much yeah. because everybody be like, well, who does he remind you of? I'm like, I don't want to say. There's a Kyrie Irving in this lottery, though. Is there really? Yeah. Who is it? I'm going to save it for later. Okay. <laughs> uh, last one in this category is the Pelicans. They won in 2012. They picked six twice this decade. That's about it. And... From a karma standpoint, in their favor, uh, really dicked over by the player empowerment era this year, which is just the player empowerment era going wrong and Clutch intervening with their team and Davis just checking out and then claiming he's checked back in and all that stuff. I actually felt bad for them. So I wouldn't, I would be, I have them number one. I didn't come up with any rankings, but I would have them like as far as karma and be like a team that you have no ties to winning. I go, you know what? Good for them. So here's the counter. Okay. They had Davis and then proceeded to try to speed rush a contender around him instead of just actually like being smartly building around him. They trade. They did two separate picks where they traded. For, what they traded two first for Drew Holiday. They traded a first for Miritich. Yeah, and then they were always in a dump rush. Miritich later. They also gave out terrible deals. I mean, if you go through Etwan the, the Moore stuff, and yeah, well, the Solomon Hill deal is an all timer where everybody was just spending recklessly all the time. So, yeah, that, that's fair. I mean, you can go year by year how they built the team, but they also, and this could be on the organization and ownership as well, but they have this run of injuries with that team, and maybe it's Davis, maybe it's Drew, but there's a feeling around the league that they could upgrade that part of their team. Um, all right, before we get to the last category, and there is one, two, three teams left. My from gosh. the karma standpoint, I uh, want to talk about State Farm really quick. Because State Farm, do I have that thing? Oh, yeah. We're I think they're great. If we yeah. Don't script, Watch yeah. this. Live, li we're teaming up with State Farm to create a segment called What If, where we discuss theoretical NBA scenarios and imagine a world of infinite possibilities, just like the NBA. Anything can happen in real life with a State Farm agent. You can be better prepared for whatever life throws your way. I wanted to talk about, we're going to do this twice, about great NBA what ifs from this decade. So here's one for you. What if Embiid doesn't get hurt in the 2014 workout stuff leading up to the lottery and definitely goes first, but then LeBron decides he wants to go to Cleveland and then they trade Embiid to Minnesota, I guess, for Kevin Love? Does Minnesota, A, does Minnesota still do that deal for Embiid? Or would you keep Embiid and put him with LeBron and Kyrie and be like, no, actually good, we don't need Kevin Love? He was the best player in the draft, and I'm not saying that retroactively. Hands down. Like, it wasn't – Wiggins was a really good prospect, and even Jabari Parker, you're like, okay, this makes sense. These guys are going to go to the top three, but you're so scared off, especially a bigger guy, a foreign guy with those kinds of injuries. 
that it was right in Hinky's wheelhouse because he's like even better. I don't have to. I don't have to do this. But remember when it's funny you bring this up because when LeBron wrote that letter about coming back, but the Love Wiggins thing hadn't been done yet. And right. LeBron mentioned everybody except Wiggins. And Anthony Bennett. Right. And it was like, wait a minute. You pick the guys that are going to be in this trade that everybody's been talking about? Yeah. And there was one theory that because Wiggins hadn't signed with LeBron's group that that's why it was done. I don't think LeBron wanted oh, to play. Oh, they would never be that spiteful. <laughs> but LeBron didn't want to play with any rookies anyway. No. He's never wanted rookies. He wanted them to trade the pick. All the times they've had picks, he's like, let's just trade these. I don't, I'm don't. i not going to play with some rookie. So I don't know if he would have appreciated Embiid as much when you know a lot of the players that tweet out about guys when they're first watching them in the tournament, they're playing. It's not like yeah. they're going to be home scouting these guys. So to just say, oh, he would have loved Embiid, Embiid wouldn't have been traded, and then maybe Embiid is still with LeBron in Cleveland, it's a fun one, but it's assuming a lot with LeBron and a younger player. Did that ruin your game? So, no, because I was thinking, I think they do the trade. Embiid's hurt the following year. They end up with the number one pick again, probably. They take Towns, and then they have Embiid in Towns, which is like a really fun alternate universe. Which is basically what he has now with Simmons, except Towns is a better shooter. I think Towns is probably a better point guard, too. Uh, sorry, Chris. Anything is possible. That's why State Farm agents are always thinking ahead, hoping to make sure you're ready for the what ifs in your life. All right, last group, three teams. This is my top three karma teams in reverse order from three to one. The Wizards picked first, third, third, and sixth from 2010 to 2013. Here's where you get some karma. The John Wall thing, I actually looked it up because I forgot what it was worth. It's four years, $169 million, but that's for the next four years. It's actually not even like, oh, we're year one into it's the It's the most untradeable contract like, in the NBA. Yeah. No, starting next year, it's yeah. four years for $169 million. It's It's like they're in a fantasy league where they only get to spend 60% what your buddies can spend. It's like, all right, guy, but you have to pay your full entry fee. Disaster, And then the Ernie Grunfeld thing was just so unfair to have that as your GM. And he's just, you know, like having your uncle run. But doesn't that feel a bit like bad ownership? If I counter here a little that, you know, they're the team that kept Ernie in that position. They're the ones that kept figuring it out. Like, oh, we're just going to keep fixing this on the fly. Like they kept adding to a flawed thing the whole time. But they almost made the Eastern Conference Finals two years ago. Yeah. I I don't know if any of the stuff we saw in the Eastern Conference Finals last couple of years is real. You're just throwing it out. Yeah, I, I, just like think, I just think it's all pointless. The basketball is so bad. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, the thing with Leon says, I, he, it seems like he's a good hockey owner. They won the Stanley Cup. So it's not like he's a bad owner, you know? No, I think he's into it. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't – I'm just surprised you have him ahead of New Orleans, that's all. I just feel bad for the Wizards fans because if I had John Wall on my team, that would be all I thought about every day, like constantly. Just be like, wow, it's just my – basketball life is over for four years I, i'm back in 2023 basically so next one knicks i have them in this second to the highest spot um sorry Jason. did this did this uh did this take something out of you to, to get you to do this because this is kind of your ownership rule here or does that mean you just feel that bad for the fans to me it's the fans trump all the other stuff i couldn't put them one because they've been so incompetent the last uh, really 20 years, 19 years, uh, and they have an owner who just has no idea what he's doing. I just feel bad for them. Like, I really feel like I can't remember another lottery situation where if the team won, more euphoria would happen than with this next thing. It would be like the dominant sports story of the entire year. It would surpass Tiger winning the Masters. It's crazy. So... There you go. Now, okay, you're, so now you're kind of winded. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm just trying to think. Is it really bigger than Tiger winning the Masters? If they got Zion? I mean, it depends how good you think he is. I think he's like LeBron. No, I think Davis he's that good. Level. Yeah, no, so I think that's he's that like, good. wow, this is transformative. Uh, last one is Atlanta. They obey every karma thing I have. They've only had one top three pick since 2008. A lot of dignity. 23 and 30 <laughs> down the stretch. I love the dignity So rankings. much dignity. How deep did those go? So Who many, was last in dignity this year? Like the Hound in Thrones when he gives his own life to kill Mountain. A lot of dignity there. Spoiler alert. Sorry. If you haven't seen it by now, I don't know what to do for you. <laughs> Tell us the end of Veep, too. Uh, yeah, she does. Um, <laughs> uh, 
The Hawks haven't been cool since the late '80s. Not that Joe Johnson run. No, no. It was Dominique basically two faceoffs with MJ in the Eastern semifinals with Bird, and that was the peak of the Hawks. I I asked Rembert this because he's from Atlanta, my old Grantland teammate, and he agreed this would be the greatest moment in Atlanta sports history if they won the <laughs> if they won the lottery. He was serious because they didn't win the Super Bowl. Nothing good has happened for them. Ninety five World Series. Nah, it's like the strike year. It's like it's like half it's a year World after. Series. Yeah, it's like didn't does that really count? <laughs> the strike year they didn't have it. No, the lockout year, whatever. Yeah, or it right. started it was, late. Yeah, it was ninety four. Nobody liked baseball that year. And that's your I, baseball I segment on the lottery show tonight. <laughs> uh, do you worry that do you worry that if Zion goes to Atlanta, that's going to screw up Herder's development? Because I do. Herder. <laughs> Like, whatever you – it'd be just awesome if they won and they go to Zion. They're like, here's the deal. You're kind of like fourth in touches right now. You can figure it out. <laughs> you know, the big three. It's just something to think about. It's just Herder, something to think about. The big three, Herder, Zion, and uh, Trey Young. Have you watched Durant, Herder? Curry, Clay. I Herder's can't, amazing. He was like, I can't wait until I'm allowed to go out in five years on the road. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. So you think Nick should be first. No, I think New Orleans should be first. Really? You really feel bad for New Orleans? We have different – I didn't know what the criteria was for the whole thing. Like, basically, uh, I still you, don't either. If, if you have a bunch of high lottery picks in recent history, then, yeah. I just feel bad about the Anthony Davis thing. Um, I'm pumped that Griff is in that position. But, yeah, you could, you could counter it, too, by saying, what's ownership doing? But if then you do that, how do you have the Knicks ahead of them? But I, I understand the fans. Look, there's more Knicks fans that are more passionate about it. And we're really looking at something that would feel like the Ewing-type reaction. I don't think that's overselling it at all. I feel like you're sucking up to Davis in case you end up on the shop with him. There's a really good chance I'll never be on the shop. I'm still holding that hope every day <laughs> of my life. They have the one white guy spot every year. I feel That's like that could be every week, one, every month, however, every three months, whatever it is. I, I just, just think there'd like be could, like Seth Rogen, Rosillo. I don't know. It could, you're interchangeable for me. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I don't. They'd I be still like, think you should do it. Consider like, it. I'm throwing your hand. Like, all right, in the bees, we got this Will Kane character. We're gonna break <laughs> him down, and then I'm on the shop Will going. Kane. Like he's not that bad. And then everyone just eye rolls and like pulls their hoodies up. Do you know how many teams have won the title? With the number one overall pick. The pick that 35 year. Years, 35 years of lotteries. 35 years. A team winning. wins the lottery. How many teams have actually won the title after winning the lottery with the guy they won the lottery with? Uh, I'll say it's once. So it's happened twice. San Antonio with Robinson and Duncan. And Short then season. Cleveland with LeBron and Kyrie. So it, it's actually taken two guys that you won the lottery with to win the, to win the title. It's never just been one guy and then you win the title. Um, but if you think about those circumstances, and San Antonio fans are incredibly stubborn about a bunch of stuff, and I don't really get it. Like, Duncan's not we, a center. Yes, we're doing a, this? No, no, but I'm just bringing this up. We're attacking San Antonio? This is great. San Antonio fans. <laughs> no, like, that was on the like, card. What do you mean? Best power it's forward ever. Be like, why? Because he told us? Like, he played center. He played, yeah. I've done this exercise. I've gone through all of the guys that he played next to that didn't really play center and would start and then they'd be on the bench. And in that world of basketball, he was a center. And then the other thing is that Spurs fans say they didn't tank for Duncan. Oh, my. It was egregious. Right. So, Robinson was ready to come back like at the All-Star break and they just like put him in a And I don't blame cellar. them. I don't blame them for doing what they're doing. But I just don't like when people argue stuff that's so painfully obvious the other way. It's like you can still love the Spurs. You can stick up with the Spurs all the time. But you can't call Duncan a power forward and you can't say they didn't tank. There you go. I also – my other problem with Spurs fans who I respect and enjoy um, – they How many the, Spurs fans do you know? Well, I was in I was in the heart of darkness, two straight finals with them yelling at me when I was doing countdown. The they do this thing where it's like nobody respects us, nobody appreciates us, we don't get enough attention. But then if you actually like follow basketball and read the internet, the Spurs got it like an incredible amount of love for Duncan and Ginobili Pop. Pop gets treated with kid gloves more than any other sports figure we have. I actually think it's like a it's like a a big jerk circle if, for the Spurs. If they Am I allowed think, to say that right. on a live lottery show? I think you already started swearing. It's been uh, weird for sorry. me because I swear I don't so know much on the was, podcast. But I just feel like this is, Can you retroactively? Uh, I guess I not. just don't want to be a first take at some point being like, <laughs> what the? 
So um, no, but seriously, I think people love the Spurs. You can't they do, do the whole they thing do. where it's like, ah, the Spurs. Who's talking about them? The, we did this from 2013 to 2015. All we did was talk about how great. I the picked Spurs him to were. win every year for a decade. Yeah, I just on the radio show, I go, just put me down for the Spurs, like the Pats. So you know, I actually think I believe in the Spurs more because Brady started falling off a little bit. I'm just kidding. Uh, don't do that to stuff. Edit that. Hey, edit that out. Pats, six Super Bowls, Spurs, five. I'm just pointing that out. Rockets with James Harden, zero. Sorry, Sean. <laughs> uh, we'll get to every franchise hey, by the end do, of this let's one. Let's do a Zion thing really quick. All right. So let's just play the game of if the Knicks win the lottery. Somebody, you're right, Jason? <laughs> just make sure he's okay over there. Um, there's rumors that they would then flip him for Anthony Davis that Shams reported and that like Kevin Knox would also be in it. I was like apoplectic. I think like if you win the lottery and you get Zion, that is the equivalent of when a football team gets like Mahomes on a rookie deal. It's like the single biggest advantage you have. Zion will be And there's more certainty than even there would be with Mahomes. Right. You get Zion for, you know, it's like 9 million, 9.5, 10, whatever it ends up being for the first four years. And then you also have this major advantage of being able to re-sign him. You would have to absolutely screw it up in a historic way for him not to be on your team for eight years. That's the biggest advantage you can have. I get Davis. He's 27 next year. He's He's been dinged up in a lot of different ways. I'm not positive he's can be the best guy on a title team. And I think Zion's a better prospect and has a higher ceiling than Anthony Davis did. And I thought Anthony Davis had a chance to be the best power forward ever. I think Zion has a chance to be like one of the best 10 guys. Would you have said this one year ago if Zion was coming out in last year's class? Off of that Pelicans When it, when it was just like House of Highlights? I what? was just following Zion and House of Highlights and yeah. dunking? No, I don't think I would have. Like, why do you follow this teenage kid on Instagram? Like, he's an think, awesome dunker. I'm all in on Zion. I'm still waiting for like the butt dot 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 with him. It's like I heard Colin today talking about, well, Hayes? he's he's – not even 6'6", six, six. he's 285 already. I'm not the, going Cowherd. The Hurts. pressure you could put on your knees and ankles. I don't like, like Cowherd's height weight, guys. Because he would be, I love Colin, but if he was trying to make a point, he would just shave off two inches in, this, in the segment. Oh, I saw what you did there. That was good. No, it's true. Yeah. Um, I just think, like, I think he's a short thing. And I get him at one third the price of a superstar for at least the next four years. Why would I trade that for Anthony Davis? In a vacuum, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. You wouldn't ever say, "Let's do this. Let's do where you have all this cost certainty, and you have to look at what the Anthony Davis contract isn't right now in comparison to a rookie deal. What it's going to be? It's it's going to be one of the most massive contracts in the NBA. So in a vacuum, I don't think you would do that. But DeAndre it, Ayton representing the Suns is. Uh, Who's representing the Heat? Is it Wade so he can exchange a Who jersey? Who is representing with... the Heat? Oh, I thought it'd be Wade so you get footage of him doing a jersey thing with like Russ what Granick you... or something. Well, how'd you feel about the Ewing move? I thought that was a bad move. I didn't like it. Which team has him? The Knicks are using Ewing as as their representative. Wait, do you care? I would have. I think James gone with James Dolan should have been there. It would have been great. Drake? James Dolan just being like, fuck all you guys. I'm I'm, I'm going to host my own lottery representative thing. <laughs> People would freak out. Can you imagine yeah. that? Oh, it would be the worst. And then Everybody. he wins and he's doing this and the Knicks fans. Yeah. Player for player, though, if you were just – like, I don't – as much as I like Zion and the whole thing, like, there's still that one small party that goes, what's this going to look like once the guy's actually out there running around? And we're comparing him to somebody who any given stretch of the last year we've thought of as maybe the best player in the NBA – but if it's specific to the Knicks and the Knicks knowing they're getting Durant and say you're adding Kyrie to that because they have the two max you're slots. You're the knowing. No, I'm just I'm trying to think of all the different I'm versions just of. I'm repeating what you said. I'm doing the if it's the Knicks and they know they're getting the other two guys. Oh, here we go. All okay. Right. Lottery's happening. We're probably on a delay. All right. So the Celtics are staying at 14 with that Kings pick. Sorry, Philly fans. I love, by the way, the fact smashing of trying to get that in between yeah. picks. It's hard media. All right, Miami. So we're we're still even at this point. Miami state tax rate is a little bit lower than the city. This should be Charlotte. Okay. All right, so here's the all Lakers. Right. If the Lakers don't come up here, I'm going to fucking flip the table over. I'm just telling you, all of you. 
Oh, that looks they green. That looks green. Oh, oh, my God. T-Wolves. Oh, my God. You've got to be kidding me. What the hell? How is the league doing this? That's just oh my that's God. just magic. And I'm not talking oh about Johnson. God. Yes. Whoa. What is that? Whoa. Let's go. <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah, they have two. I'm super confused. Wait a second. What is happening? Okay, so now that means Boston's not going to get the Grizzlies pick. The Grizzlies moved up, so yeah. the Celtics don't get their pick. Yeah, but you still have a chance that Zion's on the Lakers, so you're not in a great mood yet. Oh boy. If Zion's on the Lakers, we're folding the ringer. <laughs> the Atlanta Hawks. Wow, the Hawks got screwed. Let's go! The Hawks had a had the fifth best chance of winning this, and they moved back three spots. I'm so confused. Oh Griff is just locked in right now. Oh my God, they dropped three spots. Well, right, we're we're. No! So the Knicks could really end up five here, because we already know three teams moved up. Lakers. Oh my God! So they went from three to six. So this could. So New York, this, New York, and Cleveland still alive. This could as be the next. Two of the three worst teams. This could be the Knicks. Oh. Okay. This is amazing. Oh my God. So we got the Knicks, Lakers. Our feed just went out. I think now would be a good time to tell you about State Farm. Uh, oh, somebody just hit an input button. Oh my god! They're probably taking a break. They're tired because remember they're 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 switching it up to the four now, right? Is that is so? That, uh, all right. So the four teams alive: Lakers, Grizz, Pelicans, and Knicks. Wow! What are you gonna do if Zion goes to the How Lakers? How were the Lakers in this? What were their odds? Two percent chance. Go. <laughs> Lakers, two percent chance. All right, so we have, so we have the Lakers with a two percent chance, Memphis with a six percent chance, New Orleans with a six percent chance. And I love Darius Garland too. So this is kind of like, whoever's fourth here, you're, st you're still a winner. Are you serious? Yeah, I do. I love him. He's only in four games, technically five, but he got hurt. Boy, it'd be, it'd be amazing if. But hey, the Celtics didn't get that Grizz pick. Your 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 tone, the the color of your face has changed. I just want to I just want to point out the Lakers were completely screwed. No free agents were going there. It was LeBron and that's it. It was like the sad last season of a TV drama that went on too long. And now all of a sudden they have one of the top 4 picks in the lottery by some miracle of ping pong balls. You know what would be <sighs> What if what if it's R.J. Barrett and he goes third and then everybody's like, oh, I can't believe we got R.J. Barrett at the beginning of the year. He was going to potentially go number one and he ends up being like a worse shooting Brandon Ingram. I just I just gave you a whole next like three years. By the way, New Orleans. Yes. I don't know. I don't know if I would trade Davis if I got a top four pick. Well, Davis is probably going to have more to do with that than than David Griffin, right? I don't think there's any pick other than Zahn where Davis is like, I mean, I like Darius Garland. I don't think Davis is going, hey, that kid, that's my Kyrie comp. Why the did we do this live? I feel like I'm going to have a conniption. <laughs> the is funny thing is that live? every pick that we got after that Lakers thing, you just kept yelling, I don't know what's going on. It's this, unbelievable. This is when you stopped being a the CEO and started Lakers. being real. Unbelievable. I Had, what are you looking for? Your karma rankings? They've had the second, 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 and seventh picks since 2014. And now we just put them in the top four again. Does this mean Lonzo's not safe if they get the second pick? It has actually, if they get the number one pick, I do you think people will say this was rigged? Yes. Okay. Because people say it every year. Because about I'm going to walk up cities. and down Hollywood after the lottery and yell at people that it was rigged. Can somebody make you a sign real quick? 
I wonder. All right. So where does the league want him to go? Knicks. So Knicks. the best case scenario for the Knicks is, or the league is Knicks one, Lakers two, New Orleans three, Memphis four. I don't know how. How do you break the tie? New Orleans, Memphis. What's the worst case scenario for Zion right now? Memphis, New Orleans, Memphis. Yeah, I think it's Memphis. Although it'll be Seattle in five years, probably if he goes there. I'm kind of speechless. I get. Yeah, be I can tell. I can tell. You. What? What? Are you, what's going on right now? You've done radio by yourself. Why don't you carry us for a minute? <laughs> It's kind of gathered my thoughts. Here's the thing about Pete Rose. If he knew, <laughs> if he was betting on his team, oh my God. who's the victim? Oh, my God. I mean, Ty Cobb? You want me to do my Ty Cobb segment again? <laughs> Belichick, second lineman on Tombstone, says, <laughs> we're taking calls. Zion can't actually go to the Lakers, right? I don't think he can go to the Grizzlies or Pelicans. I don't know. I, 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 I would have to rethink everything if, I ever okay, thought about my if life. If he went to the Pelicans, does Davis go? Davis stays. This, this league. This league. This league. Podium game. Whew. Would anybody trade it? Could this be a longer commercial? Oh, they're dragging this one out. So New Orleans could conceivably trade Davis for the number one pick and reunite R.J. Barrett and Zion. Yeah. The, the number, wow. yeah, number three pick. I can't believe Kuzma's there. It's such like a loser move to send a player. Really? Like classic what loser about Laker brand? move. What about your brand? Terrible. How about the, Rob Palenka show up? Didn't Evan Turner show do it one year? Yeah. Rob Palenka, show up. Clean up your own mess. How about Elliot Perry? Wasn't expecting that tonight. Ewing. Is it good or bad that Ewing's there? Uh, I don't wow. know. I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer. Fourth pick coming. Look at that smile on Tatum's face. Yeah, all right. All right, that's good. <laughs> now you're back in. You're back in. That's good. I'll, if this says next. I'm fine with four. Oh! Oh my God! Oh. Ewing has to smile. That's the fakest oh. smile he's ever. Like, oh no! Oh, oh my God! Oh, Grizzlies no, got him. Oh my God! Oh my God! So New Orleans gets the. They had a six percent chance of winning, and they won a once in a decade type guy. That was. I had them number one in my karma. One. Yeah. See, the karma rankings worked. So, was that the league going, we're sorry about the definitely. Lakers tampering with your team? Here's definitely. The pick. Let's put, like, you know what we want to do? Let's fix it this way. Instead of having Zion in either of the two biggest markets, let's pick the two smallest markets. <laughs> and that's the right thing to do. All right, let's go quickly. Zion. Oh, can, David Griffin. He was like on NBA TV a month ago. With uh, all right, all right. Sorry, sorry. We're just too. All right. Let's so let's about... go. Let's go in order. New Orleans with Anthony Davis and Zion Williamson. Drew I'm Holiday. not doing it. And Drew Holiday. I'm not doing anything. I feel like that's like a contender next year. Yeah, but you got to make sure Davis is. Oh, so you wouldn't even trade. Even if he said I'm not resigning after next year, you'd be like, now you're gonna play with Zion. We're gonna see. How I'd it give goes. it at least till February. By the way, all the bigs. That you looked at, like the DeAndre Ayton thing. Like sometimes, if you have two bigs that can't shoot right now, and Zion, he, he just he can. I'm not saying he won't be able to, but he was 31 percent from outside. It wasn't great. It looks really ugly. Everything else about him is basically perfect. But when you want to talk about perfect big big combination, it's one of it's, the best. It's about as good as he could have hoped for because he's playing against. He's playing next to somebody who's big enough to kind of protect him defensively, but then can play away from him. And by the way. I feel like you could run a high screen with those guys. Couldn't you with Zion as the, as the ball handler and Davis as the screener and vice versa? I don't know who would stay up on Zion in an NBA game yet until he proves himself enough, but I actually I, I, would, I would look at it more as Drew you Holiday? have Zion in the post kicking it back out to Davis, and you can't double on either side. Or Zion. Yeah, well, I always like Zion off the screen with a head of steam. 
Yeah, so then he could Davis just Davis stays out. Pick. Right, Davis Oof. stays out. And we both love Holiday. I thought he was do. the most right. underrated guy last year on a trapped on a not so good team. I really like their team. I think they have cap space too because um Holiday makes like I think twenty four, Davis makes some, but some guys came off. I think Solomon Hill is he Solomon off? Hill was a ten year deal. They could stretch him <laughs> ten year. He's the first ten year deal we've had. They could stretch him though. I think that team's a contender with those three guys. I really do. Well, I, think, I don't think they what? would win the title, but I no, think they could make no. like the second round of the NBA playoffs. And and could they do what Portland did this year? That's about as far as I'll go with it. Just yeah. in his first year, could they be frisky? Okay, what if Davis tells you in your griff and says, "I'm still not resigning after next year"? Would you just go, "All right, fine"? Like, what would you do? I'd play it out till February and try to see if he was happy with Zion, because if Zion is really a transformative player, I'd want to see it. Do you think Kyrie was at home going, <clears throat> Knicks? Yeah, well, this so this, this is one of the fun outcomes of this because if KD leaves the Warriors, the Warriors are still going to be as fun as they ever were. KD and Kyrie go to the Knicks, great. And then we have this New Orleans team that is now like our like the most fun league pass team we'll have. They have to play together just for our sake. Could they trade potentially? Could they trade Davis for the four pick Knox? And the picks Dallas got in that trade. I mean, uh, they got from Dallas in that trade. So they have two firsts from Dallas down the road. Yeah. Um, so four knocks and two more firsts. And the Knicks get Davis. It depends Kyrie. on what Davis is telling you. If you're convinced there's no way you're re-signing him, but you it, you it has like think how quick this stuff changes in this league every every few months. What if Davis loved playing with Zion? And goes, you know, I didn't want to do it. I told him I wanted to move on. I wanted to go to a bigger market. I wanted to play with guys close to my age. I don't want to rebuild and do this whole thing all over again. But, um, I mean, Zion might be the kind of guy that you like. Everybody, you know they're going to get along. Zion's personality is incredible. I like Zion in New Orleans. I'm okay with that. I like, I like him, it better like in than the Memphis. South. I like yeah. it better than Memphis. Because I just don't feel like, you know, it's. I like Griff. I like what they're trying to do. But, man. Unbelievable. So we ended up with the ninth team got first, the eighth team got second, the first team got third, and the eleventh team got fourth. Who had that in their mock draft? <laughs> it's one of my least favorite sports talk radio things. Um, <laughs> what do the Lakers do now? By the way, this has Cam Reddish written all over it. Can we do a coming up next on that? Yeah. Coming up next, what are the Lakers going to do? This has Cam, Cam Reddish, Reddish written all over it. <laughs> We're teaming up with State Farm to create a segment called What If, where we discuss theoretical NBA scenarios and imagine a world of infinite possibilities. Just like the NBA, anything can happen in life. With a State Farm agent, you can be better prepared for whatever life throws your way. I almost want to do a what if with this draft we just saw. Go for it. Man. Good time. Nah. Let's do... Uh, so we did this on the rewatchables, but I want your take. What if OKC beats the Warriors in 2016? What does the next three years of the league look like? Uh, does Durant go to the Warriors? I think Durant was going to leave OKC because of the Westbrook thing. No, I don't know. I mean, you know, that whole thing like, hey, Boston, you came in second. I, Of all the rumors about Durant that whole year, the Boston stuff didn't – I don't care about the presentation and all the stuff out in the Hamptons. I only think he was going to Golden State, but I do think he wanted to get away from Westbrook at some point. So you I, think think, would, I think it would have been Boston or um, he re-signs for one more year with OKC. Does the one and one and then that's it. Um, all right. Anything is possible. That's why State Farm agents are always thinking ahead, helping to make sure you're ready for the what-ifs in your life. Uh, somebody who wasn't ready for the what-ifs in his life, Jason Concepcion. Can you come over? Oh, I thought he left. I'll share my mic with you. Um, I can lay out. I can jump up. No, it's we're good. No, no. Um, here, have a seat. Yeah. So, the fourth, you're not the fifth pick. That was a win. Great. <laughs> I feel fine. I feel good. <laughs> you don't, the, you don't come up for the fourth, for the fifth pick or the fourth pick. That was in incredible. Uh, at that point, there was, uh, you know, real, real high-grade cocaine in my bloodstream. Uh, I was tasting blood. I tasted blood in my mouth at that point. Uh, I was feeling really, really good. F fifth and fourth picks, I was feeling extremely good. How mad were you about the Lakers thing? Was that a monkey wrench? I didn't care. Didn't I didn't care. care. You're just I, focused on the. I liked it. I liked it because I liked that there was some weird stuff going on. Okay. It, it, like I just 
make something interesting happen. I liked it. So you get the third pick. It's number three. Yeah. Which is not Zion and it's not John Morant. Yeah, I don't. E I don't even know who the other guys are. It's like Ryan. Tyrion Lannister is. Uh, they're looking at him for four. Looks I, like I think RJ RJ Barrett's still going to go really high, but um, for as good as good as Zion was towards the end, and he was incredible. Right. RJ and Reddish just got worse. I mean, Barrett shot 29% against the ACC from three, shot 25% from three in the month of March. And then Reddish, I don't know what a pro scout would watch in his Duke games that would get you really excited other than just his athleticism. But, uh, yeah, I'm bumming you out even more, man. So it's, that's not really what I meant to I, do. At the same time, I feel good. I honestly feel good. Katie's coming, right? Katie's coming. Kyrie's <laughs> right. coming. He says... <laughs> Does R.J. Barrett make sense with those two guys, though? Because my answer would be no. Kyrie doesn't like him, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was that funny. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's laughing. Are you pain. just delirious right yeah, now? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love that. Why doesn't, why doesn't uh, Kyrie like him? I'm just kidding. It was a oh, Kyrie okay, joke. Great. It's a Bill uh, and I Kyrie joke. You never know with him. No, with yeah. Kyrie, you'd believe any, any I, sort yeah. of teammate. I would honestly believe it. Be yeah. like, so who do you want now with third pick? You're not ready to think. Yeah, a forward? I, I, it's, a yeah. big guy? I guess R.J. Barrett. Would right? you have rather gotten the fifth pick and not gotten that close? No, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Like, let's, you know, like, I don't want to be down in bull bull land, you know, like, wondering what's going to happen next. Well, what about third pick and Knox for Davis? <laughs> let's go. Okay. Let's do it today. That, that cheers you up. Yeah, absolutely. And again, we're getting KD. Things are great. If you get the best player in the league in a month and a half, yeah. you're probably going to be okay. I, I'm feeling good about it. I think it. you're going to be okay. Yeah, thank you very much. All right. Thanks thank for you. joining us. Thank you. All right, we're going to wrap up. Jason, heroic, yeah. noble, heroic effort. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Let's do Memphis. I think they take John ja Morant 100 times out of 100. That's probably the easiest. But that kind opens up. How about how great is that? Like opening up what the Conley possibilities are. Now I think Conley could actually play off, and I think even Ja could play off if you had to. Does he have one year left or two? Conley has. Uh, that was a three year, wasn't it? Or was it know. four? No, I think it was massive. I think he has. I thought two he years had one. Left. I thought he had one year left next year, and that was it. But maybe I'm wrong. All right, we're gonna um, look it up right now. So yeah. So what if they? Is there a possibility that they would like R.J. Barrett more? Than John Morant, he's got one year left with a player option for okay. thirty-four million. Uh, so, so he's that's got two years, years left. left. Okay. Yeah. Um, say that again. Would Is there like... a possibility that R.J. Barrett would go in that two spot and not John? Morant? Okay. Beginning of the year, R.J. was in the conversation with Zion for number one. Even though Zion had all the hype in the beginning, it was a little bit, a little bit of like, hey, you know, this R.J. Barrett's right there with him. He had a big game against Kentucky. Yeah. That first game of the season, his transition, the way he attacked. And you're like, this guy's a monster. And then it just, I don't know if it was Coach K and what they did, if they became too Zion reliant, but it just, over the course of more and more games, you saw more holes from him. So I'm sure there's some scouts that are still totally in love with him. I'm sure there's scouts that still like Cam Reddish, but Reddish was even a worse version than, than RJ, and Reddish is a better athlete than Barrett is. So I thought... Um Part of the problem with R.J. Barrett, well, two problems. One, everybody talked about how they just didn't have shooters, and he has this slash and kick game, but you're kicking out to guys who can't shoot. You know, Barrett shot it worse from three than Zion did. Fractionally less. But yeah, like percentage-wise, Zion shot it better from three than R.J. Barrett. I like his shot, though. I'm not worried about his It doesn't like, look three, as bad as Zion's shot. Yeah, yeah. I'm not worried about his three-point shot. The second thing that I think affected him, and I think it's totally justified, is – you know, from the get-go, people are like, why is this guy shooting? Give the ball to Zion. This guy's screwing things up. This should be Zion's team. Why don't Zion get the ball at the end of the games? And you're 19, and you're reading that stuff, and your family's reading it, and you've gone from you're this really highly regarded high school recruit to all of a sudden you're in the freaking tornado, and the Zion mania grew and grew. I don't think it affected their relationship. It actually seemed like they were pretty close. But I just think that's a tough spot to put a college freshman in. So I'm interested to see what he's like on a team that's excited to have him. When it's more wide open, there's an argument made, hey, get RJ out there, let him initiate the plays a little bit more. Uh, it was a team that had no shooting, as you pointed out. But, you know, Steve Nash had said, forget it. Like, once you get him. And then I saw, wait, they're both Canadian. Yeah. I'm like, the you Canadians guys, always you guys are like, other. you know, another Joey Votto shout. You know what I mean? Like, I got it. It's the same thing like in a maximum security prison, the Canadians, they just hang out. 
totally. Yeah, they're like, they, we know you're not really yeah, Canadian. They know, they know what they're doing. Uh, they're just not as violent. I think there's a chance. There's a chance that Memphis would either move down a spot to flip picks with the Knicks and gain some more assets, or just take Barrett with the second pick. There's, because I think there's there are GMs out there that could talk themselves into the RJ Barrett versus John Moran thing. Would be my guess. I'm not saying it'll happen here, but I think it's in play. So if you're the Knicks and you really decide, you know what, we really need a superstar to go with all the other stuff for a potential superstar, could they move up a spot to get John Morant? Because if you look at their roster, they're still going to have Conley. They're still going to have Parsons under contract. Shout out. Yeah. Uh, Valance Yunus in the trade. Somebody, what was the derisive nickname for Gordon Hayward that had Char Chandler Parsons in it? It was like four Chandler Parsons because he plays video games. Four Chandler Parsons, like four Chan. It hurt my feelings. Whoever made up that name, I didn't like that. <laughs> maybe they, maybe the Celtics could trade Gordon Hayward for one of these top four picks. Have you done that <laughs> article that yet? <laughs> Conley, <laughs> straight up. Uh, let me throw this scenario at you. What if New Orleans's end game was we want to put Zion and John Moran on the same team? So they say to the Knicks, we'll trade you Davis, but you have to make sure you get John Moran out of this. And then the Knicks have to move up, switch, switch spots. Memphis gets Barrett. They get a whole bunch of other stuff, and then whatever. You don't like that idea of John Moran and, and <laughs> no, Zion I'm on not, the same team? I'm not anti it, but I, I think what we're, we do sometimes is where it's like, okay, let's get the whole positional thing figured out in this summer. Like we're gonna, You guys are the same class, same draft class. You'll go to the same. I'm just talking about from the a same fun hoodies. standpoint. Yeah, John Moran fun. and Zion on the same team, like that's actually in play right now. That would it's be not inconceivable. Uh, no, I, I don't think it's impossible. I think it's really hard. I think what you just mapped out would be really hard to pull off. So we think best case scenario: New Orleans takes Zion, Memphis takes John Moran, and now they can shop Conley this summer. And I think Conley is really good and has a lot of trade value. And I'm I'm not as scared by that number now that there's like a year plus the player option left. No, okay, not anymore. Bad. I mean, I'd rather pay somebody a ridiculous amount knowing, like, okay, it's two years. Right. So, all right, so you put down Jaw. The Knicks at three, who knows, but that's probably a pick there. I think the Davis trade happens now to the Knicks. If, if he, unless he says, I want to stay with Zion, I want to feel it out. I personally wouldn't do it, but I, I think if you're New Orleans, you get the fresh slate, you get you get to start with two of the top three, you're ready to go. Right, right. And if those guys are really good, see, that's the thing, though, is you go, hey, then we'll have cap space. Somebody want to come here. What would you do if you were Davis? Well, I, I don't know if I'd want to do the Lakers thing until this thing is sorted out. You know, because even just if it's me and LeBron, is that going to be enough? Is this Lakers thing really as bad as everybody's making it out to be? Because it's felt pretty bad now for for a while, other than the LeBron blip of a positivity. The Boston thing, I don't know that I'd want to do that until I knew Kyrie was leaving. But that's me being me, not being Anthony Davis. So I would just start calling Durant. I would start calling Kyrie. I'd figure these guys out. Be like, where do you want to go? Because I'm not sure that I want to go to the Lakers. Because he did. When all that stuff was going down, he actually did want to go to the Lakers, which is why I push back on some of this that no one who's good wants to go play with LeBron anymore. I mean, it's gotten worse for LeBron, but Davis was as good as anybody, and he wanted to go there, so he was okay with it. That's a fair point. I'll steal it about two months from now. The NBA draft uh, guide that the ringer did, Kevin O'Connor had his top 30 prospects. He had Zion 1, R.J. Barrett 2, John Morant 3, Jarrett Culver Guard at Texas Tech four. He's in the. He had that bad shooting game in the finals. DeAndre Hunter is five. I'm just trying to figure out the Lakers at four. What they would do if they couldn't trade for Anthony Davis? At the very least, this is a tradable pick where they can get somebody really good, right? Um. Maybe not a superstar. Yeah, but yeah, right. An like asset. it's part because I mean, if you think about the Jimmy Butler trade, it was. Five and seven, ultimately, you know, yeah. and, and kind of a and five draft. was kind of a tarnished was, five. Yeah, right. It wasn't a great draft, and then you know they did a good job of marketing, but it it depends. Like who's the who's the disgruntled guy who'll be under contract that we think is pretty good uh, that can help at five. 
Jason Tatum. Would you do Gordon Hayward right now for the Lakers' fifth <laughs> pick? Stop. <laughs> Taught me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's from a from a who's going to win the title the next two years standpoint. Oh, Darius Garland, you're, he's your number six. He has Connor has him uh, and his oh, Connor stuff on this is awesome. Uh, he's really good. But I from a who's going to win the NBA title in the next two years? LeBron James is on the Lakers. We assume he's going to be at the same level, offensively at least, next year. And this number four pick that they just got, I think is the best asset they have right now other than LeBron. Because I don't know with Brandon Ingram, I don't know what's going on with, with his blood clot issue. Is he going to be healthy next year? Um, the number four is the most tradable asset, I think, that they have, even more than Lonzo. Like, if, I, if I'm a GM... And you call him and you're like, hey, man, I want to see any interest in the number four pick or Alonzo. I'd rather have the number four pick. This is a great point that you're bringing up because you're right. All right. You're, you're totally right. Like, think about think about people, you know, and how you get older. Like when you're younger, you knew, you know, a bunch of different people. But as you're exposed to more and more people and the same people over time, you probably find more things wrong with them. Right? Like you ever yeah. realize like when you're living with people and unless you're still living with people, I hope things pick up. But you know what I'm saying? Like, if you're my I age do. and you have a – like, that would be weird at 40 to have a bunch of roommates. It's like in, in college, senior year is when everybody starts arguing at 2 in the morning. Because, right, you start yeah. to realize, like, you know what? You suck. I'm around yeah. you all the time. Yeah. Because you – the Use more the you, toilet paper again. Right. The no more, more you learn paper. about Thanks. the person, it's weird, and that's why people break up. But, like, the more you learn about that person, it usually ends up leading towards negative things. And the yeah. reason I'm bringing all of this up is because with draft picks, it's the exact same thing. When it's a new pick and the wrapping is still on it and you haven't seen Jarrett Culver not be quick enough or take bad shots, yeah. or you've looked at DeAndre Hunter and say, you know, he's a nice role piece, but I'm still hoping you could be a superstar at number five because we've seen guys go there or later end up being really impact-type players. The newness of this pick and that it's your decision and you get to say, that's always more valuable. Well, it's, it's also like is. you look at Culver, Hunter, Garland. Let's just look at those three. Every GM is going to have the rankings – they're going to totally love one of the three or like one of the three, but not love. And you can really talk yourself into it as it gets closer and closer. Every the year interview, this happens. It's like, yeah, we brought Rosillo in. God, what a great guy, man. Happens Such a, a pro. He had a tie on, really firm handshake. Asked me if I had any kids. This is our guy. And you just like, you, you, you go off a cliff with it. So Somebody I think asked like, me if I had kids the other day and I didn't think that was my guy. <laughs> <laughs> it was unrelated. Well, the thing with this pick, though, they have cap space, too. So they could, if they feel like they can't sign a free agent, they could use this number four pick and take somebody's contract in and actually be able to fit the contract in. Right. Not have to load up on a bunch of contracts or, you know, sometimes with the matching of salary stuff, which I still hate as a mechanism to prevent owners from spending more money than they want to. But, you know, you end up trading like you guys could ad agree on the prime principle things and it's like now i got to give you all these other pieces i don't even want to get rid of because of magic salary but that's a long old rant like i'm trying to think for example and i don't think the wizards would do this and i think they're smart enough not to trade bradley beal but if the lakers said hey man we'll give you the fourth pick for bradley beal and not john wall's contract but one more bad contract right now um You'd at least have a meeting about it if you were the Wizards. I wouldn't do it. But those are the type of guys that they should be shopping for, the fourth pick, somebody that can come in and play in a playoff series with LeBron. You know, And there's not a lot of guys out there. If we go through the list. If I'm doing the Beal deal, but it's so much money, so I'm not quite sure what it would mean, and then it also factoring what Beal is going to cost you. So what other, what other team would go, I want to give up an asset to bring in that backcourt that never did anything and probably doesn't get along all that much anyway. But – Beal to the Lakers by itself is an absolute no-brainer for the Lakers. You know, it'd be the most fun one that will never happen. Gordon Hayward to the Cavs. Stop. No, Gordon Hayward has no trade value. Uh, Shorter <laughs> contract. What about Westbrook? Oh well, now we're like, okay. See, here's your get out of jail free card. Here's the number four pick for Westbrook. You can start over. You're out of salary cap, luxury tax hell. Build around Paul George and Stephen Adams. In this number four pick, talk yourself into one of these dudes. LeBron and Westbrook. Uh, look, that's not crazy. It's not crazy. Yes. I'm going to tell you why. 
Westbrook's contract over the next four years. I really yeah. enjoy when you do this to me just on the fly. Be like, what's yeah. Westbrook? What's the entire dollar amount? How many years? It's a lot. Yeah. It's not. It's, it's 38.5, 41.5, 44.2. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and report that Russell Westbrook's picking up that option in 2023 for $47 million. Sources. <laughs> no, I just, I just was able to get a text on that and confirm it. So Jesus. that's. Forty-seven million for somebody that, by the way, is having another slight knee thing. Like you made that knee joke about how many different knee touch-ups he has. Yeah, he, he, didn't he just do another one? Yeah. So this is not me turning in, you know, doing my Russell Westbrook rant again about just him being a tough fit. That's another thing too. Like if you were the Lakers, part of me wants to see that LeBron looking at Westbrook every time down the court, going. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or, but, or LeBron running a play and Westbrook just on the corner, like with his arms on it. His but arms you know, OKC hand. would say he's still in his prime. We like him. Our fans love him. He's the superstar that will stay here. We can't go and replace him with somebody else. who wouldn't do it. But like, I love that game. I, I got one game. more for you. All right, number four pick for Ben Simmons. So you're getting better at this. Thanks. All right, go ahead. Give me a breakdown. Just clutch client. Bring him in. Playoff ready. He's been in the second round two years in a row. He's a little further along than whoever Fitz, they get at the fourth. Thing. Fitz athletic, non-shooter, Lakers roster around LeBron. Yeah. They, they, like they that's our MO. Year. That's what we do here. Dude, again, what, under LeBron's wing, he has a chance to become a superstar under the tutelage of LeBron James. LeBron then, might be like, hey, bro, you're going to have to take a couple jumpers every now and then. Yeah. He's yeah. Be, well, I'm shooting with him every day. We're going to turn him into something. Yeah, That's actually... If you're Philly, then you then you just you pay for all the other guys. You pay take a guard with number four. Be Max McConnell. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Try to get Herder, maybe. If you can't get him. Go to every B. every one of these picks is in play for Herder. Yeah. So <laughs> um, all right, so I think the Lakers shop that pick. I don't think they take it. You just don't LeBron's telling them to shop the pick right yeah. now. And even though I think the LeBron roster thing like that, look, I'm being sarcastic right now, but LeBron's not going to be looking at the draft going, I can't wait to play with one of these young guys yeah, that develops cool. into something. A 19-year-old, right. awesome. Oh, Cam Reddish, he's long, sweet. <laughs> you know what's funny when Cam Reddish is probably texting LeBron right now? Like, you know, they had that famous lunch a year ago when he wasn't even at Duke yet. It was him and Rich Paul. and So he's in and he's going to sign with Clutch. But now there's actually a chance the Lakers could take him. So he's probably texting LeBron like, yo, man, this is great. We're going to play together. And LeBron's just pretending he didn't get the text. It's like, yeah. It's oh, going I didn't to realize green. you texted me. He's like, you have an iPhone. <laughs> hey, man, I hate you yesterday. Did you get my text? He's like, oh, man, my son took my phone. That's crazy. Something weird happened. Crazy. He dropped That's... it in a bathtub. All right. Uh, Does that quick, rice trick work? Can we do a quick losers? Yeah. Losers. Cleveland drops from two to five, which is just brutal. I mean, that is like – that happened to the Celtics that one year in the Duncan lottery. I think they they had the hot, most ping pong balls, but they went somehow – They had the highest odds for one or two. The worst they could have done was three and six, and that's exactly what they did. Yeah. No, that was 98. I'm saying that oh. the, uh, the, the Durant lottery. Oh, you're right. They ended up with five. The, fi the fifth Which was like right. the lowest the they, worst they could have Right. So Cleveland ends up at five. That's tough. The rebuilding project's going to take a little longer in Cleveland. Phoenix. That's goes a weird to spot, though. Six. By the way, guard-wise, like that makes you think it's Culver, it's Hunter. This stuff could change too. Like Mox can influence us in a weird way. And um, I was looking when they had the lottery show. Billis's rankings were like completely different than some right. of the other rankings. So you know. So but, Phoenix is six. They're getting a guard. I actually no. They're going to get another wing. They can't play. <laughs> like a new Josh Jackson. <laughs> Chicago seven, whatever. The from a loser standpoint, uh, Atlanta was five. They dropped to eight. They did get the Dallas pick, so they got eight and ten out of this. Boston. Wait, well, hold on. And for a loser oh. thing, I, I'm so, still no. I'm still going loser. Would you rather have Luka Doncic, or would you rather have Trey Young in the tenth pick in this draft? Luka. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> that trade was terrible. But your delivery Everyone was so... Everyone this year. Right. People this year, when Trey Young started playing better, people were going, uh, you know, you can't judge that trade yet. I was like, sure I can. 
That trade was terrible. Trey Young could hit seven threes a game, and that trade right. is still bad. I the other guy is years. like the most comfortable rookie I think I've ever seen. Yeah, not saying he's the best rookie, but as far as him, like, all right, I'm just gonna, I'm totally cool with all this. Uh, yeah, we we got another first. It's like, well, now you have the tenth pick. Congratulations, you have the tenth pick and a four. Kobe draft. White, Trey Young, just run you to death. Sure, um, I think they're a loser. The Wizards, who are six in the selection thing, and they dropped to ninth. That's kind of a quiet murder. Usually you don't go <laughs> that. I, I don't think anyone's ever gone from but six remember, to nine. Remember, because when they flatten this thing out of the top, it basically allowed these teams now, like wherever you were, you can get bumped down another one. Yeah. So, so that, that I can't wait. By, like some GM who lost is going to give – I don't know. I'm not going to name any names to make it sound like I'm calling out reporters because that's not what I'm doing. But there's going to be a GM whose night sucked, and he's going to go, this new system's terrible. Let me give you all my reasons why. And they'll be like, Somebody's... league sources are saying teams are not happy. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, like... that probably already happened. If we go on Twitter, <laughs> totally, that's right. probably there right. right now. So Washington got screwed. Um, Dallas didn't end up with a first-round pick, but I think it's okay. And then Minnesota drops from – I guess 10 to 11. So then everything else was right. This is crazy how this played out. But I did I did mean that with Boston. Because if you think if you have the Sacramento pick going into this season, yeah. only top one protected, and you end up 14th, which is what the odds told you because of their surprising season. Now, look, it's not like you're going to go back in time and say, oh, that was actually all these terrible trades. I mean, Ainge has stockpiled all these picks. But that's if you had said a year ago that Kings pick will be 14, no way. That's bad. I would say that they were a winner, that the Memphis pick rolled over, which is what they wanted. But then they're a loser because the Memphis pick really rolled over. It rolled over to number two. And John Morant might be like a superstar in two years. So uh, that pick is top five protected next year. And I just started thinking about Kyrie and John Morant together, and I stopped immediately. Jesus. I wouldn't wish that on John Morant. So, yeah, action pack. You think night. Rozier would do another week of TV shows? Can we <laughs> Rozier? <laughs> I didn't get enough touches. We didn't talk about Zion's feelings about going to New Orleans. Great question. That is Can he hold out already? That was the the weakest market in the league, fair to say, right? Yeah. Worst attendance, um, shakiest kind of media situation. I think they had like one reporter covering the team. Ownership. Lowest local rights or local TV ratings, worst in the league. I heard a story that when the Saints had a, a, a holiday party, that it, you remember like in the first Caddyshack, really the only one that matters, so I shouldn't have had to differentiate it. But when they went to the Bushwood pool and yeah. it said Caddy, and it was like one to 115 or 145 to two. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah they yeah. basically were like, the Caddies can have it for 15 minutes. Yeah. That's what it started turning into with the Pelicans where it was like Saints holiday party and then it would just be like a sticker it said Pelicans too. So this oh. this was a team that was supposed to be sold at some point and now with everything that went wrong um the Benson ownership said no we're going to try to make another run at this thing they bring in Griff. I guess the coaching situation is more stable than we thought, but it needs it still needs to prove from the top down and not having like a football department running the basketball department, it still needs to prove. But ultimately, Zion, you know, it's not going to matter. Like, you, we haven't seen a guy get that upset before he even came into the league, even though that's what the league has become. I think it's, I think the three, the four best prospects of this century were LeBron, KD, Anthony Davis, and Zion. And I'm not going to rank them. I just think out of everybody we've had this decade, these were, those were the four that really stood out. And New Orleans got two of them this decade. It's pretty good. Yeah, and we, don't, we have unhappy. no idea. We have no idea how it's going to turn out. Haley, what are they saying on the internets? Uh, What's the big topic right now? They're mad. They're mad at which at New Orleans getting it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not, Not the Lakers getting the fourth pick. Nobody thought that was shady. Oh, they, we didn't talk about that. Because it's stupid. <laughs> Davis is like... He's Actually, like, guys, yeah. that That's All Folks t-shirt, yeah. part of the ploy. That's All part Folks, the we're right. winning the lottery. What you I did is I tanked for myself 
I love the Pelicans. Where's that extension? That is interesting, though. <laughs> so they drop. <laughs> Wait no. a minute, the theory that he did it on purpose? No, I don't agree with that theory. Oh, oh. I'm saying if he hadn't stayed out of those games instead of the ninth pick, they're like the 11th pick, and then they don't you never have know. the balls to win the lottery. Right. The balls, I mean the ping pong balls. Um, yeah, he must – I feel like he's burned the bridge there. Like, he'd really have to grovel. If I'm a Pelicans fan, and I don't know what that would be like. I don't think there's a, a shitload of them right now. I'd really, he'd have if to win so, me if back. If you're from Louisiana, this is how you'd handle it. You'd be bummed out when you went to the game, and then within three minutes, you'd be in a good mood again. Because Zion did an alley-oop. Oh, no, I'm just talking about people out. from Louisiana. That's just oh. what they do. You think I, they're happy people. I went down to Baton Rouge the first time ever, and I go every year now, but I was there for an LSU-Alabama game. They lost. I thought it was going to be devastating. I asked one of my buddies who ran a place, I go, how bad is Saturday night going to be? It's going to be terrible, isn't it? And he goes, it's Louisiana. Like, yeah. And then an hour later, I thought they won the national championship. So um, so you think they'll forgive Anthony Davis? Everybody's too happy. Well, that, that's, that's selfishness. It's the same. It, look, it's the same Celtics fan – that's MF and Kyrie in the tunnel at the end of the regular season. That if Kyrie resigns, he's turning to Murph going, dude, you know what? I think he's grown up. You know? I like this press right, conference. Right, yeah. Like, I think he said the right thing. He hit all the right notes. Yeah. So that's what would happen if Anthony Davis, the, the angst isn't about like, now I hate you forever. The angst and, and the, the disappointment is that you're telling me you don't want to be in my city. And if he just said, you know what, I screwed up everything all last year. Let's see how the Zion thing goes. That's like, you think about how you would act. You'd, you would just be like, okay, that's, he's staying. Order the jerseys. I, the only part I didn't like was the part where you had Kyrie coming back to Boston. The, the craziest thing that might actually happen. Okay. Which won't happen, but just I'm throwing it out there. <laughs> I'm running out of paper. New Orleans trades for LeBron James. <laughs> Anthony Davis. They <laughs> New Orleans says, you know what? You get the Lakers, but we've traded you for LeBron James. And now it's LeBron James, Zion, and Drew Holiday in New Orleans. Clutch South. Clutch South. I love it. Second, second office. Mark Jackson replaces Gentry. Um, in. We're done with the lottery, right? Yeah, kind of. Did we hit everything? Okay. Uh, quickly, because we, we never previewed the playoffs. So just quickly, Warriors. Uh, I think it's going to be Portland's going on right now. Close. Uh, <laughs> You're thinking 17 15 early? Within a point, yeah. What, did, what was your prediction for the series, though? Five games? Six I games? I went six because I, I think Portland can get one of these first two up there. Uh, I've just become more and more impressed with Portland. But. You know, they they split and then Durant comes back. You know, do you think Golden State tries to win both of these games without bringing KD back and potentially even tries to win the series without KD coming back? If as, they go up to continue the fuck you KD run they're on. <laughs> uh, well, don't you don't you think if they're up 2-0, that changes the KD? Yeah, you're, thing? you're taking it super careful at that point. And they did that with Steph before. Yeah. Now they were playing lesser opponents, but when Steph got hurt in sixteen. I think you could kind of tell that they were like, you know, I think we're still going to be all right. We're still going to be all right. Um, and that was uh, that was pre. -KD. I did, didn't quite get enough information about Katie's injury. It's like he strained his calf. It's like strained calf. He's out for three weeks. Like it. it I wonder what's actually going on with the calf. I never like, trust any like of these guys anymore. Like a slight tear. Like if I, I at one point I was like, if I get another freaking Malcolm Brogdon update, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> Like that went on forever. The all timer though <laughs> was oh <laughs> no, but the all timer was was the KG two thousand nine. Oh my god, that went that was on a saga for. I mean, Lost was like speed it up. You yeah. know? <laughs> it's like Mark Spears every day. <laughs> it was god. just every just update, day, no update. And then some guy would think he would have info, and all you realize was that Angel's lying. So my point is, is that with these KD updates, there's not many people I trust on it. Not that they have bad information. I just don't know what. When it's medical stuff, teams just, you know, they don't have to tell you. I feel like uh, the sweep is in, the no KD sweep is in play for the Warriors, where they just dial it up in like a really, really F you way. Do you still think they could be either teams in the East Who? without KD? I think they could, yeah. Don't you? Could. That's a lot to ask for Miguel would be my only question. Like, does he have four weeks of really hardcore 
35 minutes a game type of intensity in him would be my question. Uh, yeah, because it always has felt like a different series, and it just happened again. Where it, towards the end, you're like, you know, it just it, it becomes a grind to him. Other series? Did you have time to think about that one? Yeah, Toronto, Philly. I did. Uh, I. I mean, uh, uh, Toronto, Milwaukee. Was, wait a minute. If we want to do a quick Philly thing off the podcast, oh, how about yeah. the Brett Brown deal? We were incredibly wrong. We were like, the guy's done. Didn't even entertain a scenario <laughs> where he was the coach next year. And then they waited two days, and they're like, Brett Brown's coming back. Okay, to be fair, though, had you heard from anyone all year nah, long that was like, thing. hey, but that's a good case of sometimes NBA sources not having good information on that because we didn't know what ownership wanted to do with Philly. It reminded me, I put this in the Ringer NBA Slack, when the OKC brought back Scotty Brooks for the 14-15 season. That's when they awesome, came out of the 14 awesome playoffs, comparison. and everybody was like, oh, they're not going to – this is done. they got to get a coach who understands how to stagger Durant and Westbrook and – stop doing things like playing Kendrick Perkins in this many big moments and run some sort of an offense, and he's done. And then they brought him back, and I went and found this article that was on the internet from after they brought him back. Rereadables. And the, the quote was, the quotes were very similar to what these Brett Brown quotes were. We're like, you know, we think we were really close. Obviously, we need to work on some offense. Our stuff, our issues with him were more structural than anything, Like that, like to – not realize that a backup center was going to become important in a game seven on the road seems like something you could have figured out in March. But remember, the not staggering Westbrook KD stuff was because those guys refused to do it. They're like, we want to play the first 12 minutes of every game. Don't break us up. And then if you're, if you're Brooks, there's not really much you can do. And maybe, you know, to try to give – because you're right. Like, all year long, it's like, they're not going to – this isn't going to work out. This isn't going to work out. If he's out early, so they get the second-round exit, you're wondering if in a weird way it would be a good thing down the road if they didn't make it to the Eastern Conference Finals so they could go ahead and fire him. And it's not even close to what happens. They endorse him. But I don't know if they're going to try to tra- change up some of the substitution pattern stuff because if they're bringing all these guys back, they got to get a little bit more creative based on the matchup. And I wonder when the extension kicks in for Brown was what we're talking about is maybe the team's like, you know what we don't want to do? Just eat $15 million right now. Yeah. Or they felt like they were close, and maybe they are. Uh, maybe they're well, close you can talk we yourself pretty quickly into that. Ah, that ball doesn't go in. Totally. We right. went overtime. We're in Eastern and then Conference Finals, yeah. Milwaukee. You know, is it a bad matchup? To Whatever. me, it's more of a you think you're going to get rid of them, and then you actually look what the options are. I mean, there were like three teams in hot pursuit of Monty Williams. That's who, amazing. I mean, why is it not that? talked about more? That Three wh- teams were chasing him. And I, I thought he was like below average on New Orleans was my takeaway. Yeah. Or average, like nice guy, but not like a good game coach. Isn't that funny? Like, I'm like, wait a minute. Why does everybody, and I don't want to, you know, because everybody's going to be like, oh, Monty Williams is a nice guy and all these different Yeah, we get all that stuff. But it's funny how quick that can change. And then when people look at Vogel and be like, well, if everyone else is getting the five years, I'll never forget. Lawrence Frank said this to me once after he'd had two runs at it. He goes, What a you know, name drop. Yeah. Just hang him out. Lawrence. <laughs> He's probably watching. <laughs> um, if, if he said to me, he goes, Hey, you don't usually get the third chance when you're a non player. You don't get that third head coaching gig. Yeah. And so if Vogel's looking at it this way. I mean, his flame out in Orlando was pretty quick and also kind of surprising because I think we all liked Vogel. But then Vogel was really good saying, these are my my issues with offenses that I just didn't update my approach to. Yeah. But And he studied with Brad Stevens last year and all in, kinds of stuff. In what world would you have thought Vogel was the L versus the Monty Williams win? Right. Like, oh, we couldn't get Vogel Monty Williams. Vogel almost so made the Vogel. finals against LeBron and Wade in their primes. They were up 2-1, making people wonder what you could get for Bosch. I think – that was your podcast. It reminded me there was uh, in the 90s, like Belichick got fired and people were like, you know, a couple years passed and then he became a hot coaching candidate. I mean, look how that fucking turned out. Those guys never, it never works out. It's like rich jackasses. Like they knew that guy wasn't going to make it. <laughs> um, this ter- this uh, Toronto Milwaukee series, I think Milwaukee's going to win. I've studied it the last couple of days. I wagered on a Milwaukee Warriors. Series parlay minus one fifty four. All right, can you thank you? Can you tell us what you studied? I looked at the matchups. I thought about it. I envisioned what would happen. In I do this weird envisioning process where I imagine you should tape one. Should I? Should it's like that Headspace app where you're just like this and you close your eyes. Does that work? There's a lot of people Headspace, on a lot of that. People like Headspace. It just seems weird. Like I got to touch my phone to chill out. I want you to try it. <laughs> no, I, I've still I've been in the Northeast for too long. It doesn't work. But I was trying to imagine. 
Yeah, Close okay. game, last five minutes. I feel like Toronto probably has to win two games in Milwaukee to win the series because they're not running the table in at home. So if they win, it's going to go seven probably. And from what we saw last series with how scared Siakam was, what they needed from Serge Ibaka just to get through Philly and how nobody else was willing to create a play really except for Kawhi. Like, I just don't think that can make the finals. Whereas Milwaukee has... You know, they have some heat check guys, obviously. They have some up and down guys, but they've also proven they can survive when Bledsoe's not good. Um, their three point shooting can go away for a game, but overall, the mass going to be in their favor. And Giannis is just a freaking monster. And I, I think he can protect the rim on them. I think he's a. What do you do with Gasol in this series if they play Giannis at center? What happens? That's where the Ibaka thing steps up, and he's going to find some defense that I don't think we've seen from him consistently. And I'm not talking just about block numbers, but there's times with Ibaka where I think he was – look, Ibaka, for the most part, had a much better year this he year. He tailed off the last But he like, did tail months, off, yeah. right. But he so was they, huge like, in Game 7. They need so. vintage Ibaka, I think, yeah. to win this series. So that's probably a stupid request, even though it was just great seeing him be the one guy other than Kawhi that was like, I'm good. Like, I've been in some of these big games. He was comfortable. It's really close. I picked Toronto at the beginning of the year to come out of the East, so I'm not going to change my pick on that one because I could still see it going their, why, uh, their way. But the Lowry game seven, like in between stats play, scared the hell out of me again as we're sitting there watching it, going like Bledsoe may just have a bad game because I think he's going to have a bad game. I think Lowry, you know, on the way to in the bus sometimes, that's when it's determined. Yeah. And he he was pretty frisky in that game seven, and I still didn't feel like he trusted himself to beat anyone off the dribble and try to actually make a play. I think it's too hard to win with one score in round three. I think you can win two rounds, but round three, it's just it it doesn't jibe with what we've watched. So yeah, there we go. Um, all right, that's it. I'll, this was really fun. <laughs> this was an exciting night. Zion Williamson is going to New Orleans. Were you saving that all night? That was good. You like that? Yeah, it's like 09 Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thanks for watching the Ringers Draft Lottery Live Show presented by State Farm. If you missed any of our show, it will be up on the BS Podcast feed later tonight. Don't forget to check out the Ringer NBA Reaction Show tomorrow. Thanks to our great Ringer crew for helping us do this. Thanks to Sean Yu for recovering from the drive-by shooting earlier in the podcast. 17? How many innings? Oh my, wait a minute, that doesn't, seven innings, 17 Ks, holy mackerel. Who did he play, Pawtucket? This is, it's exciting. Uh, thanks for watching and check this out on the feed if you missed the tail end of it. Uh, see you soon.